Welcome to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing. This is the How To series where we're going to try and tell you how to make some fishing booms really, really cheaply. That's my favourite way of doing it. With these plain old wire coat hangers. So if you've been in a hotel sometime and you open the wardrobe door and think, oh God, there's no coat hangers. It's not me, honestly. Honestly, it's not me. But let me show you some of the things you can do with these. And it's not like brand new, it's just I'm using this material. And I'll show you what a real spreader boom looks like if you've never seen one before. Now using wire booms for fishing, different techniques, is nothing new. In fact, they use it big game fishing in what's called trolling, where they're putting baits along the surface. And this, if you can see it, is a full on big game fishing spreader bar rig, which is steel cables up here with the crimps there what's called thimbles, stainless steel thimbles, 600 pound wire, a huge gauge boom here, that's bent over in a V shape, and it has all these clips, various loops that you, you can clip and slide on your baits. Now you're gonna be dragging for bluefin tuna, a bait about nearly a pound in weight, half a pound to a pound, and this thing can tow, this end goes to your rod and line, so it's pulling it along the surface, looks a bit like aeroplane wings from there, and you're towing behind the boat like this, wait for this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different baits. Now, only one of this spreader bar is going to have a hook in it. These will be all rigged and mounted, it's towing it along, they're what's called teasers, and as you're towing it through the water like this, the giant bluefin tuners come up behind and they eat the trailing fish, only the trailing fish. If they bite these others off, so much the better, they'll come back, but the one with the hook in is the trailing one. So spreader bars are really nothing new, but I'll tell you what, they've really been catching some fish down off the south coast of England using small spreader bar rigs, and you can make them from those coat hangers. Let's check it out. Right, here we are in the totally awesome workshop. Coat hangers. Swivels. All you need in the way of tools for making these various booms. Good pair of pliers with rubber grips, so they've got a good bit of power there. A pair of side cutters and long nose pliers. Simple as that. And to undo these coat hangers, I simply bend the end back round like this. Just grip. Just in there, you can see a little double bit where, the, where they spun it up with the machine and Voila, we can even speak French. Untie it, unspin it, straighten it. Cutters. You don't have to compress this really hard. You just rotate it a couple of times. Just like that to weaken it. Pop, it goes. So you don't have to, you don't have to actually force and crunch it down. If you just get, get your cutters like this, get them like that, and you just, I'll do it slowly. You just give it a little turn. That scores it, I'm scoring it under pressure sliding under pressure then when you do squeeze it all you do is give it a little bit of a tweak it fatigues off throw the scrap bits away right you've got the heads cut off take your flat pliers and try and just bend it out into a straight line which is really not exactly rocket science there you go then you get out of one coat hanger depending on what type of boom you're going to be making you will probably get a meter at least of this wire. There we go. That's enough, that's all I need. So you've got your straight piece of bar there. Now spread a bar, it can be any sort of length, but all you've got to do is, is when you've got this is to put a swivel at each end and a towing point in the middle, just in here, just like that. So that you're gonna put a swivel, swivel, spin it on, and a towing point there, and I'll show you how it's done. Right, well, all you do is just get your barrel swivel, pop it over the end, use your pliers just to grip it, to put the bend in the, in the wire, just like this, bend it over, just like that, crush it down, and I cross it over, I don't know if you can see there, it's just crossed over. When it starts to cross over, what I do is, you can grip it, Put a little twist in it and just one or two round like this it doesn't take many bend it round a couple of times bend it vertical 
get your snips just rotate as you cut and when you get it it will just pop off like that then I get the end of that and just crush it level so you don't have a tag in there to don't have the tag in there to spike your finger once you do that you do the same at the other end so you've got two ends as I say in the cookery programs here some I prepared earlier there's your swivel on there just like that twist it up same on the other end barrel swivel you're going to tie your traces on there and then you need to put one in the middle but I put a link swivel in the middle because that's where I want to tie my lead on as well right you've got there one barrel swivel obviously you put the link swivel on I've made this one up really big really big I wouldn't necessarily use in this big but at least you can see how it's made slide it down to the middle of the boom just measure each end like that and then keep squeezing just squeeze the loop down until you get the swivel through the barrel just resting in the bottom there and then I shorten it and shorten it and shorten it bending as I go I'm almost making a coat hanger back up again I don't pinch it really tight because I want to time a line on that and I want to leave that for a lead so when I put it like that the best way I found of doing this is pinch that base edge in the vise. I mean, you can do it with pliers like this. In fact, I'll try this one for you just so you can see. It's very, look, look how tough it is. Really hard to do. So pop it in the vise and spin it up like this. Right now, because you can put it in the vise, you can just nick it in the end. I'll bring the swivel up, up here, so I'm not actually crushing, crushing the swivel. And I'm just going to you know, lock it. That's tight there now. Now, look, I've got two hands. Now you'll see I can rotate this. Sometimes a galvanizer or whatever they put on the tinning comes over. That's all I need just to put a spin in that and then straighten out the booms like this. And there, if you can see that, it's hanging absolutely straight down there. Now what I'm going to do, curl that around. That's just a piece of galvanizing flake off. I'm going to tie on there my line and I'll put the lead on there just to show you how it works. Right there you go we're all rigged up here I'm using this bright yellow 80 pound line just to show you this goes up to the reel and there's your link open it up just pop your lead on there and we're ready to go you can see how that holds holds that down and then at the end of the boom onto the swivel again obviously not using 80 pound line for flat fish and stuff but there's your leader and there is the hook and obviously i won't be using a hook 60 or shaughnessy eagle claw pattern for place and dabs i'm just doing it to show you the rig if i hold it up you'll get a better idea i think of how it's going to work okay so this is this is pretty much what it looks like there is the lead now you can see if you've measured it properly it's hanging equidistant if you have one boom too long and you're not in the center it's going to be like this it'll fish crooked but my ledge clip there i've tied into the the top here just the top eye of the coat hanger wire i've got my lead clipped on there it's bumping along the seabed and it's pulling behind it just like this two different short traces now don't have a long trace because if they're too long they will actually converge like railway lines looking into the distance and you can bend this wire closer so you fish it Let's say 18 inches apart and there's my trace of my hook say I would guess 12 inches no more than that so quite short traces on these so there you go that's something from a coat hanger wire that you can make uh, the latest the very latest spread of bar rigs mostly for flatfish having said that we tried it literally yesterday I saw a dab and a nice big smooth hound caught dabs on one hook eight ten pound smooth hound on the other so anything will take it you think that's good what about some free clement spoons? Cost you nothing except time. Okay, I've cut myself up several lengths of the coat hanger wire. Now, all you do to make yourself easy to use running ledge or clement spoons. Long nose pliers, get the end of it. Just in here is the strongest part of the uh, plier. So just start the roll just there. Put a little kink in it like that. Hold it and just roll it and keep working away 
on that ring, making a little circle, a tiny circle, just a circle, about, I don't know, two turns. There you go, I'm going to bring it back up to there. Now don't open it, I want this now to fold over the top of there. So I'm going to turn it round, grip it right where I want it to bend, right there, and just bend that wire at 90 degrees. So that gives me my end loop. Now you can make these booms, a standard boom would be about three inches. You can make it longer because when you drop down it doesn't get tangled. So if you want to drop down fast, make the boom longer here. So you can see how we do it. Get the long nose pliers, just start that roll, slowly working round. It does get a bit trying on the wrists at some stage. I've got that diameter hole there. Now I grip both of them now, both rings, you can just squeeze them together to level up, level that wire up. You can go once or you can go twice, it really doesn't matter, as long as you've got that one loop. And now, I don't want to open that loop up this way, I want to close this, this loop, this bar, over the top of that one. So I'm going to use the bigger pliers here, just grip it like that, and then I'm going to bend it at 90 degrees right over. Like that, just straighten it up a bit. Now you can see the the start of the shape. That's your end piece. That's the butt piece that goes up here to your to fishing line. And come down maybe three inches, just about say there. Get your cutters. Again, just rotate it a little bit as you're cutting, and you'll find it pops straight off. Now what I do because I do a lot of rough ground fishing, I just bend, I just bend a loop in this about, measure about half inch. You don't want this longer than that up there. You want it about there. I want this tag end just to come short of the loop there. So I'm just gonna bend that round slowly. I've probably made hundreds of these over the years, so I know I'm not gonna do it. Look at that perfect, I mean that's precision. I should be getting paid for making these. Now you can pinch that in there and now, you can either tie a piece of rough nylon to your lead here, or I'll show you. Just slide the lead over and close it with a pair of pinchers. There we go. There's the lead now. Seven ounce lead, got the ring on it. Slide it straight on like that. Obviously you think, oh, I'll drop it down and it'll fall off. Fine. Get your pliers. Just squeeze it closed. Overlap it even, just like that, just overlap it. And it can hang, but you can also incorporate your own snap swivel in there if you want. And let me show you this one. So that, that's one that I'm quite prepared for. What I do to change those legs is I just bend it open and slide the lead off. Look, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. I've always got a pair of hip pliers with me. Just take the tag end off. You want to change leads. Bang, it's done. It's as simple as that. Or, the old here's one we prepared earlier. You can, I should take the lead off so you can see, you can incorporate your own swivel in there. In the bottom now to do that you need to twist this little snap link on there and for that you might not be able to do it with pliers i'll just show you how you do it in the vise okay for putting this link onto the end i've made the same boom you can see i've made it exactly the same way i drop on the link take a pair of pliers and i want to bend it over so it's bent like that now i can close that up I can close it up, but it might, it might just slide off, you know, it might just, just come off the end. So you want to put a twist in it, so I just squeeze it, like this, until I get that overlap in it. You just see the overlap there? Now that is very hard to spin up, so what I do is, I just tuck the swivel to a side, just nip the end of it, in the vise, watch your fingers, you can see the angle it's out there. Bend it over a little bit, get your pliers, and you can wrap it right around the centre shaft of that wire. Obviously it gets harder, but what you do is you close it down like this, and you just use the inside gap on the pliers. It's a little bit bigger in there, you can see. And if you just keep rolling that around like that, it crushes it in. Right, take that out and have a look at it. There you go, and that, as you can see, is perfectly on there. Pop it open, pop your lead on, 
And as the saying goes, the jobs are good and it's done. So there you have the Clements boom. And that's the way it's going to be hanging when you drop it in the water. And he says hooking himself. This is the way it's going to fish. It's going to fish exactly like that. Now I just tied a really short trace on there so you can see that's how it works. And then this is my real line to my rod top. And as I drop it down, I can lower it quite fast. This bait will go down parallel to your main line. The hook here, that one there with the bait on, is going to go down through the water parallel. If you don't use these booms, this happens. It just spins up all the line, your bait's tangled around the main line, and you'll probably catch nothing. So the idea of it is, as you can, if, in fact, if I spin this up, it shows you how well they work with the weight there. I pull them apart. You can see the spins in it. Untangled straight away. And that's how it's going to fish. So you have the boom, which is called a running boom because hoo -hoo -hoo, it runs. That's what it's there for. Running or sliding boom. And it comes up against a little plastic bead there, which comes up against the knot, which is attaching to your swivel, which is attaching to your trace, which is attaching to your hook. And that cost nothing except time. However, you may want to go wreck fishing for pollock. And then you need to make what's called a French boom. And yes, it can also be made from the free coat hangers. Here's how we do it. All right, here we go. This is the French boom finished. So that's the shape of the boom. You can see it there. That's a triangle shape. Now, I tie the lead off the bottom here. Hold it so you can see it there. You might be able to see it better. There's a lead, say three inches of line. I'm just using this yellow line just to show you. The top end here, that goes all the way up to the rod top. And at the end of the boom, I can have, say, 12 feet of wire. My sidewinder lure goes on there. Or indeed, you can use bait. I've got that hook there. You can use that for link as well, that type of rig. So about 10 or 12 feet of trace along here. Just tie it on with the tuck blood knot so it doesn't slide. Tuck blood here, tuck blood there. One final tip. If you want to make that a weak link, if you take a piece of fairly thick fishing like I've got, like 80 there, and you put the knife, don't cut it, just scrape it along the edge of the line. It'll just weaken it a little bit. You'll feel it go rough, and then that will snap. If that snags in the bottom, it will snap away like that. You lose the lead, but you're still tied up and you're still fighting the fish all the way up to the surface. Little tip there that I bet you didn't know about. But you can improve it even further by twisting in there into that end loop your own swivel so you don't get any spinning or twisting of the trace leader up here. So you can put your own swivel in there like that. And I've made a little short one here just to get it in the lens basically. And of course you can put your, your link swivel in there. You can put a link and barrel swivel, tie it into the rig so you can unclip leads if you don't want to do it my other way. And this again goes all the way up to the rod. Now, does that save some money or what? That's three different types of booms. Cost you nothing except time. That's what I call totally awesome tips.